So now I'm going to make my sweet Korean centerpiece. So this is a really pretty cabbage leaf piece. It's Dodi Fair for Tory Birch. Um, I love it. It has a wide mouth, um, a reservoir for plenty of water. It comes with this um, leaf saucer. I'm going to set that aside because it's going to plank. I will move the lid off to the side. <clears throat> So something like this, it does have a wide reservoir, and usually I would put some chicken wire or something in there, um, but instead I'm gonna use floral tape, I'm gonna do a floral tape application. However, I don't have floral tape, I have scotch tape. This works just as well, and I'm sure you all have it. So this is regular um, office supply store scotch tape. And what I'm gonna do, this is a little bit awkward, the shape is just get it on there in a grid, really, Press it on tight. Oops, that piece is too short. Uh, let me go this way. And my intent for this is just to give me a little bit more of a secure structure for my stems. And I'll go once more. It's not exactly a tic-tac-toe, but it's definitely going to help out. And I'm leaving about a half an inch on the come down onto the ceramic and pressing it down. Then what's really important is to take a piece of this and go all the way around really tight because once this tape gets water on it, it tends to um, pop out. So by doing this, it's virtually invisible. You have a little bit of a structure and then this band around will keep it really secure. Okay, so now I have a little bit of a grid that gives me a little bit more support and narrows the, um, the width of this container. I'm going to, of course, fill it up with water all the way, maybe an inch or two from the um, top. All right, so now, so I want this to be sort of all, uh, uh, all the way around, um, all, all side of the bouquet. I put it on this turntable. Um, you can use a Lazy Susan or a cake stand if that's better to get the height up so that you can see what you're doing. And <clears throat> again, I'm just gonna start with some of my ranaculas or my anemones. So I'm getting them in. Leave the stems a little bit longer. This tape is already helping them to stay up. If you cut the stems too long, you can always go back and shorten them. If they're too short, you're going to have to either save that stem for a smaller web base later um, or tuck it in really deep so that it gets to the water reserve. Make sure your stems go all the way to the bottom because these guys drink a lot of water. And especially in a container like this, you don't see the water level go down. So you want to be sure that they always have water. So by making sure it's filled to the top and making sure the stems go to all the way to the bottom, you have the best chance for success and a long life. So again, I'm working my way around, kind of clustering in some groups. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'll stab a few here in the center. And then let me fill in with some hyacinths because they um, have some nice beef to them. And I'll put a few in the middle. Sharp cut directly into the container. Um, what's nice about working in water as opposed to floral foam, which is much nicer for the environment, is that if you get a stem in the wrong place, or like this one, I feel like it's too short. I'm going to save that for something else later. I don't want to waste a single flower. Flowers are precious right now. Um, we want to have maximum impact. Let me get a few more in. I'm just working my way around the base and filling in the center. I still have room for some more anemones. So these arrangements, we don't have a lot of green layer of extra foliage. We have a few of the hostilities, which we'll figure out um, how to best use those. But what's nice about these anemones is that they do have this really fluffy, sort of lettuce-y, um, herb-like green ring that I'm leaving on that really adds um, a little space and airiness to the arrangement. So I'm just keeping it low. Remember, all these are going to continue to grow. So um, keep that in mind. Let me get one more anemone in here. I'm really glad I taped this because it's giving me a lot more support. Now, my shape is good, spinning around knowing that these will, over the next day or so, kind of get a little bit more organic. I like my arrangements to be loosely packed, you know, sumptuous without being too crazy, 
but I don't like the flowers that are too packed. I'm erring on the more packed side right now because these will grow and space out. Let me add in some of these pretty daffodils. We have several different varieties. They've opened up nicely. You just tuck them in here. You hear that tape kind of squeaking. All right, so I could add another couple more. These could be a little taller if you want. If you want to have some, that one actually didn't look so tall, but if you want to have a little bit more movement, the daffodils will not grow. So you can go ahead and leave this a little bit higher, knowing that your anemones and your ranunculus will probably catch up to it the next day or so. Okay, I have a few hostilities. Let me see what this looks like in here. I think this little bit of green just feels fresh. That's the dog, that's Tug. He's ready for breakfast. And I like to have a little bit of this variegated foliage, and it just picks up the container. Okay, I can keep adding to that. Oh, I do have these. Let me not forget these really special great pieces. They're kind of the most um, beautiful and delicate of the flowers that we have here. So even doing little clusters of three or five um, are really nice. So you can see I still have quite a few flowers left, and I definitely have enough here to make several more arrangements but I also have enough to make my Easter table look really pretty um, with this terrain surrounded by the two cups of um, smaller flowers. Okay, thanks a lot. I will continue in a few.